to help our residents, our regional workforces, our businesses all succeed using uh, the great notion of increasing and improving our entire public transportation system. And one of their very specific recommendations that I had the privilege of focusing on with Supervisor Scott Wiener's leadership has been our nighttime, nightlife, late night, and early morning public transportation system. You know, we have a great economy going on in San Francisco, and a great part of that is the uh, uh, 50,000 people that need to use public transit uh, that are part of a $50 million revenue stream for all of our nightlife operations. That includes hotels, uh, the bars, the hospitals, and all the workforces there. Everything that's open 24-7, where we understand and know that the workforce is not just limited to people who live in San Francisco. In fact, because of the increasing expensiveness there is for housing in our city, and by the way, this is going to be a site of 100% affordable housing in the near future uh, when we move over to the Trans Bay Transit Center. But while we're doing that, while we're trying to build as much affordable housing in our city, we need to know where people are already living and where they need and how they need to get to work. And also, by the way, in this 2030 transit study that we had made, we knew that this workforce that we have regionally probably gonna be people that are working second jobs and sometimes even third jobs. And we can't simply force them to use their cars to help or force them to buy vehicles to get the transportation. This is a workforce that needs our support and our recognition to make sure they can get to work or have visitors, or do all the other kinds of things that this 50,000 person industry and $50 million worth of revenue stream needs our support on. I am especially thankful to the regional transit agencies that we've had the privilege of working with. AC Transit, BART, SamTrans, Golden Gate Transit System, along with our own San Francisco Municipal Transit Agency all working together under the umbrella, working with our partners at our MTC, our, our Metropolitan Transit uh, Commission, uh, finding funds to extend um, the uh, services like our OWL service that I think our, our drivers are gonna be proud of, uh, and I know we'll talk about in a minute. That's what we're doing locally, but all the agencies working together have found funding to be able to reach where workers live and where people live. And these extended hours of operation, locating routes throughout the entire Bay Area, particularly in the East Bay, in, with our partnerships, has been incredible, a part of this effort to service and support the late night shifts and the early morning shifts of our working folks. I get to announce this effort because part of our 2030 vision plan for San Francisco was to make sure that we give attention to the programs that we're creating and that the reasons why we are creating this is because we need to sustain this workforce and recognize that they're working all hours of the evening and support their efforts through public transportation. Public transportation through all the modes that I've identified is one of the greatest equalizers in the shared prosperity economy that we're doing. If we don't do this, we're going to leave a lot of people out of the success of our Bay Area economy being so hot. We've got to get people to work. And again, I say it's a great equalizer because these are working families, second and third jobs they're probably doing, and they're probably making pretty good money because I'm increasing more nightlife activity in the city, whether it's mid-market street, when we revitalize Market Street, it'll be day and night. And all the other hubs in the city will want to operate at all hours. So I am very proud of the agencies, the regional transit agencies they're working with. We're gonna get that BART bond pass, right? But we also need to support. I need to be out there with AC Transit, with Sam Trans, with Golden Gate, with our own um, 
uh, SFMTA to make sure that everybody knows we're going to cover these gaps with our uh, levels of transit extensions, along with helping BART, along with helping our regional transit centers have a great hub uh, with the Transbay Transit Center that we're building and will be completed in the next few years. But at this time and right now, it's about that workforce and the visitors that use late night transit. We got to give them this very affordable uh, addition to the way they get to work and the way they get back to their families home safe at night. And we have these extended hours. I want to make sure we publicize that and that we have uh, a great system to work from. With that, I get to introduce uh, someone that's a little bit taller than me, ah. but he's taller on literally all things to do with transit uh, and small businesses. By the way, I just want to make sure I mention that because our small businesses are uh, the great beneficiaries of this. It's their workforces that we're talking about. But Supervisor Scott Winter has been a point person on not only the vision of uh, 2030, uh, partnering with me on Vision Zero projects, partnering with me on on the MTC and and all the other agencies that kind of help with the Bay Area discussion around our transit needs uh, and making sure that we're doing all the right things in our city. Uh, let me introduce to you uh, a great transit director, but also a really effective local supervisor, Scott Wiener. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, this is really exciting today because uh, it brings together uh, two of my absolute passions, uh, transportation uh, and our nighttime economy, our nightlife, both for people having fun and people working, uh, and, and two areas that have too often been neglected. Uh, and uh, I have the honor of, uh, in addition to serving on the Board of Supervisors, of sharing our County Transportation Authority and also uh, representing San Francisco on the Metropolitan Transportation Commission. And I want to thank Mayor Lee for appointing me uh, to the MTC where we have been able to work with our regional partners. Uh, and uh, for years in working on nightlife issues, what we hear over and over again, both from business owners, from, from workers, from patrons, is that it is just too hard uh, to get around at night uh, that our transit systems shut down uh, even before the shutdown service becomes incredibly inadequate uh, until uh, ride sharing came along uh, good luck getting a cab at 2 a.m uh, when the bars closed down uh, and it was just too hard to get around and so uh, i held a hearing uh, where we started here in particular from workers who were talking about how do I get home late at night with $100 and, or $200 or $300 in tips in my pocket uh, without getting robbed? Uh, how do I deal with the anxiety of making it to BART uh, before it's incredibly overly early uh, closure? Uh, we started hearing from business owners and of course from patrons and people in nightlife. Uh, and so I authored legislation to create um, a late night transportation working group and to require a planning process uh, and a wonderful wonderful group of people came together uh, for a year or so and it's actually still functioning and put together a great roadmap and I want to thank our entertainment commission and also our county transportation authority uh, and the office of economic and workforce development for really collaborating on that plan uh, and it recommended a lot of things, including the eventual, the big prize, which will be the second Transbay tube and 24-hour BART service. Uh, but in the meantime, before we get to the promised land, uh, we have a lot that we can do. Uh, and one of those things is better overnight bus service, and then making sure that people know about that overnight expanded bus service. Uh, and I want to thank all of our transit agencies, the MTA, BART, Golden Gate Transit, AC Transit, SAM Trans, for really coming together to say this is one integrated network and we all need to move together to expand this overnight bus service and it has been expanded and everyone is committed to it. Uh, I want to thank the MTC for really stepping up uh, to support the marketing campaign to promote uh, this late night service to the public to help fund that but also to provide tens of millions of dollars to help our transit agencies actually expand 
their overnight bus service. So we've seen all of these uh, Trans Bay routes uh, that have been created. Uh, Muni has uh, expanded its uh, overnight owl service, just making it easier and easier for people to get around at night and to give people confidence that if they need to get around, whether it's when the bars close at 2 or 3, or when they're going to work at Mission Pie at 4 or 5 in the morning, uh, that they're able to actually get around. So this is exciting. Uh, we need to promote this. This marketing campaign is going to help because I think a lot of people just don't know. Uh, I also want to give a shout out to 511, uh, which does a great job, again, in helping the public to access information about transit service. Uh, so with that, I want to uh, call up uh, Christian Peoples, the, the president of the board of directors uh, of AC Transit, which is one of our key partners in making sure that people can get across the bay in the middle of the night. Thank you, Supervisor Weiner. Thank you, Mayor Lee. My name is Chris Peoples. I'm an elected at-large director of AC Transit, and I'm currently serving as its president. And we're very pleased to be part of this effort to encourage the late night work and play in, in San Francisco and Oakland. Uh, we provided some service but because uh, former Senator Parada included us in regional measure two, but that service was pretty inadequate. And I really want to salute Senator, or Supervisor Wiener's leadership in putting together the late night working group, which vastly increased the service. We got BART to pay for it. Uh, Super, uh, BART Director Tom Radulovich, who's currently president of the BART Board, is the direct director for the mission area, and he was very involved in this. My former colleague, now the Oakland City Council member, Rebecca Kaplan, helped negotiate part of this. And so we have pretty good service on the west side of the East Bay. Um, we had some problems in the some of the routes that went further out, but I think this effort, this publicity effort, is very important so that everybody knows whether you're coming over here to party, whether you work over here, whether you're cleaning up after people who party and need to get home at three o'clock in the morning, that there is transit available. And I salute Supervisor Wiener for all his work, and I hope that this publicity effort make, means that many more people will be aware of the possibilities of getting around after midnight. Thank you. Um, so one of the things that we, uh, when we started this project, we were first focus on patrons getting home when the bars and the clubs uh, close late at night. Uh, we then started focusing more and more on the needs of workers to be able to get home uh, when they get off of work uh, late at night. Uh, but then one thing we hadn't focused on uh, uh, originally, but we realized was more of an issue, is the number of people who are going to work very early uh, in the morning uh, to help our city sort of activate and come to life. Uh, and the challenges people face getting to work early in the morning. Uh, and, uh, and so I want to uh, bring up uh, Karen Heisler, who is the owner of Mission Pie, one of our great uh, neighborhood businesses, who which uh, starts baking very, very early in the morning, uh, and uh, to talk about, and she was a great participant in the task force, uh, and I'd like to invite her up. Thank you, Supervisor, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'm not going to use these because as, as I've been listening to everybody speak, I've really been struck by how much has happened in the last couple of years. This isn't a new problem for our region. And in fact, I think it's a problem rooted in historic planning in the region that has maybe only uh, increasingly needed to, to be inclusive and cohesive. I think a lot of our Transit systems are really great individually, but were designed and envisioned at a time when uh, service workers lived in their communities. And as our, as the affordability in our region changes and the demographics follow that change, more and more and more people are traveling longer distances to get to work. Our record setter in our shop is coming from Vallejo to San Francisco's Mission District. And unlike 
large cities like New York that that built unified systems were were struggling to overcome the legacy of something that once made sense and really doesn't now. And I'm so excited to hear other people talk about early morning needs, which um, is sort of a recent quiet voice to, at the table. Actually, I haven't been that quiet. Um, mm -hmm. And to really reflect on on the change that you know a year ago I could not tell the people that work in our business without whom Mission Pi would not function. I couldn't give them an answer. Um, and people in their first week of work in, invariably were late on the weekend and shocked to discover if they were new to the area that there was no way to get from the East Bay to work on time. And now there is. I mean, it's so concrete and it's so incredible, but, but every relationship, including the relationship between a worker and their transit provider is a relationship of trust. And that may sound strange, but I, I really feel that we have, to, we have to keep the cheer on about these changes because it will take people some time to really have faith in something being there that really hasn't been there for them before. And it's a fundamental issue in our region of economic justice that everybody in every kind of work and job has access to their job at any time of day or night. So thanks for everything that everybody who's here and has been working on this has been doing. Thank you. Okay, so thank you everyone for, uh, for being here today. And uh, it's a great step forward and, and it's not the last. We're gonna keep implementing these recommendations until we get uh, to a truly 24 hour uh, transit system here in the Bay Area. So thank you very much.